Hello, I'm Karen Chen. I'm an independent film producer and distributor. Um, thank you to IDA for having me. We are recording this introduction to a really incredible keynote speech you're about to hear. And we're recording this from my home office in France. And to provide listeners and viewers with an audio description, I am a Chinese woman with long hair and a black shirt sitting in an office with a blue chair and a plant behind me. It's really an honor to introduce my friend and colleague, Zheng Jinyan. You know, I first met Jinyan when my distribution company, Degenerate Films, in partnership with Icarus Films, was fortunate enough to license We the Workers for release in the States. We the Workers is an essential documentary about worker rights and labor organizing in mainland China. And at the time, Jinyan also showed me a cut of her latest documentary called Outcry and Whisper. But as with many documentaries, it was several more years before the film was finished. The film premiered this year during the pandemic at Vision du Réel, and it's now currently in release in the States. I hope you watch Outcry and Whisper and We the Workers as they are incredibly rare documentaries. They are films made by filmmakers in exile, and they tell the story of labor in China from the points of view of workers and organizers. Through her filmmaking and her work, Jin Yan has become a leading voice in feminist criticism and documentary scholarship. I look forward to many, many more years of learning from her. If you'd like to know more about each film, you can head to our website, degeneratefilms.com and ovid.tv, O-V-I-D.tv. Enjoy the keynote and looking forward to seeing you at IDA. Thank you for the uh, uh, thank you the idea team and my friend Karin Chen for inviting me to today's getting real. I'm here to provide a China perspective and uh, a feminist point of view to raise lots of questions about the face of working women, rather than giving answers to what we are concerned about as filmmakers distributors and human beings in a COVID-19 pandemic and political chaotic era. Connecting to IDA community, um, I think we started a talk to like a few months ago, makes me really feel living in a real but absurd reality. I was born in Southern China as a Hakka, meaning the guest of the place. I had been living under around the clock surveillance periodical house arrest and uh, forced dis disappearance from 2004 and to 2012 in Beijing as part of the political consequence of my civil society work and uh, my then intimate relationship with a noted rights activist in China. Recently, I realized that over the past decade, I had been avoiding to record these experiences Somehow, I was in a living mode of bad faith. I was terrified by my status of being rejecting any job in my own culture due to the state's direct intervention of my job status. Also, because people around me are afraid of my life story and its political impact. It's not merely everyone's fault. It's a mechanism of relational repression. Uh, baking up by the government's cohesive power, which means um, punish your social relations. It's a mechanism of relation. Uh, it, it, it's seen in many authoritarian contexts. It was also, I was so desperate for the, the opportunity of working in my own culture and society. Then I even denied the authentic self in the Heidegger's sense, and was kind of trying to forget or get rid of what had happened over the past two decades to be an ordinary nobody. I might have successfully cut off almost all social connections so that I bring no harm to the other people under China's relation of repression practice, but I cannot do it anymore. Something went wrong with me psychologically. Again, you might say we are living in a world with globalization, being exiled as an intellectual 
is another story. I will discuss about this point in the late last section, China as a method. Meanwhile, uh, they're trying to forget and to be anonymous in order to deal with this trauma and the uh, psychological impact. I made three documentary films to regain the ability of being a human with kindness, which I received in the USA too. I will show three short clips to give you some ideas. The first clip is from Prisoners in Freedom City, made in 2007. It was shot by my ex-partner Hu Jia while under house arrest. The footage is from the eye of a prisoner and from the limited angles of house arrest windows. No matter where you go and what you do, you were under watching with eight strong men physically present with the invisible distance. Nowadays, with this COVID-19, isolation and digital surveillance become to many people's daily life. How can a person be oneself while living under isolation and non-stop surveillance? How do you make your resistance? This is my question. Chiosh 下午八点二十五分随时准备经验的车启动那还有一辆白色的现代两辆车结伴跟从着经验 So this is Prisoners in Freedom City which was made in 2007 with my ex-partner Hu Jia At that time I was very young this year um, I don't know how to deal with the situation. So documentation is my first step of resistance, I think. I don't have a university degree or professional training background in filmmaking. I was inspired by the font of Waiting for Godot to make this documentary using the repeat of daily surveillance scenes to provoke viewers and to question who the prisoner of this font of imprisonment is. But the house arrest is much more complicated um, than what we can present in prisoners in Freedom City. I will give you a second clip.
She chooses a labor re-education camp train, a stunning black bridal dress, skirt swirled under police escort eyes. A bouquet of light hurled into future prison cells. She chooses to amble from living room to kitchen to bedroom to study to smoke a thin cigarette as her medicine pot boils. She chooses to count sparrows, snow falling from the sky, red wine and strong spirits circling, 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 year after year. She chooses to regret a false wine waiter's song, bringing Lothario poets for friends, bringing Lothario poets for friends, for friends. Paranoia. Kafka paranoia, the howls of ugly dolls. She chooses the silence of howls in Svetavian love poems. Finger shadows in twilight, 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 white letters on black paper, a silent shutter click, click, always click, white makeup, black armor, unfading fog, she, 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 she never she ending never art performance unfolds on a stage, on a stage, a stage with no, with no exit. A stage, stage with no exit, never ending, never ending art performance unfolds on a stage, a stage with no exit, stage, stage. Um, yeah, this um, short animation upon to Liu Xia was made in 2013 um, with Irish filmmaker Trish McAdent. How to recla reclaim one's self from the living under the shadow of another person, of an, an intimate partner? How to deal with the erasing of one's name on a daily basis due to a gender biased culture practiced by various stakeholders, including media and international organizations. When they talked about who, uh, Liu Xia, first of all, they talk, Liu Xia is the wife of the Nobel Peace Laureate Liu Xiaobo. So <clears throat> after talking with many um, stakeholders, I loaded the script and did a cinematographer for a porn to Liu Xia and to tell a story led Liu Xia is first of all a forbidden artist in China. Not only the Nobel Peace Prize laureate Liu Xiaobo's wife, and her sufferings, um, her experience and the house arrest is first of all also because of her forbidden arts. All photographers in the video were taken by Liu Xia herself, and in this way, I think Liu Xia speaks for herself, even though she was under house arrest at that time. Um, after um, Liu Xiaobo passed away in the year of 2017, uh, Liu Xia, uh, the, uh, the, the second year Liu Xia went exiled in Germany. So the third clip is from Alcra and Whisper. Um, I will explain later, maybe, yeah, we watch the clip first. They just, uh, 
，想前想后，我没有问题，所以我就不再伤心了。我觉得我应该更开心。像这样子没有良心的企业，我如果再跟他打十几年的工，到退休的话，我会不会回过头来觉得不划算？就是挑战，向他们宣言说：“你们怎么做，不能击倒我，不能打垮我。”呀，呃 ，with Director Wen Hai and、uh, Trish McAdams, we released "All Cry and Whisper" this April on the 51st Vision Studio in Switzerland. For this film, I want to make a conclusion about my own story and、uh, investigate how political capital, gender, and cultural power interplay in suppressing women, and how women act beyond social activism and idea, ideological frameworks to gain individual and collective autonomy. In the society where I am from, women, like many other minorities in terms of social categories, have to be dissidents before becoming women. In the United States context, we see individual, collective. And the diverse voices with intersectional perspectives in Chinese and maybe more broader contexts. First of all, is that dominated political ideology intertwines with gendered power. The mainstream political, social, and cultural discourses are gendered. For these discourses are mostly produced by men, and by the relatively、uh, dominated not partnership frameworks. And I believe this framework is commonly seen in many other cultures. When I assisted a feminist independent filmmaker and retired literature professor Ai Xiaoming's production and distribution of her film、uh, Jabiango Jabiango Alleged, a video testimony of labor camp survivors, we found some of the protagonists were aware that. They don't have language to describe what they or their families had experienced in the labor camp during the anti-rightist movement in the late 1950s and early 1960s in China. Some simply adopted the official ideology and language to describe the labor camp. A mistake has been corrected. However, the labor camp history is still not allowed to be openly commemorated, to be discussed, to be written in teaching materials. We are searching as filmmakers. We are also searching for a language to record the history. Also, also searching for a new film language, cinematic language, to present the complexity and inhumanity among the labor camp inmates. In this end, it not only it's only possible it's only possible to tell the labor camp stories from a feminist epistemology, use micro personal narrative to tell lived experience, to deconstruct the impact of ideological narrative from government and from the victim too, to get us uneducated by the knowledge produced through the official framework. A mainstream framework in global and local societies. This method, in my perspective, also helps to deal with another threat, namely、uh, globalization ideology faced by Chinese filmmakers and also probably faced by all of you. This is the single logic of ruling film funding. 
filmmaking and distribution. It refers to Michael Haddad and uh, um, Antonioni Negri's book, Emperor, in discussing globalization. Sovereignty has taken a new form, quotation, composed of a um, series of national and supranational organisms united under a single logic of rule. Even in the so-called independent filmmaking and distribution, we still see a lot of words about uh, <laughs> like uh, award-winning, excellent, outstanding, successful, change, mainstreaming is in market, etc. I had never participated in our pitch because I cannot prove I will be successful or produce a film to meet established expectations for that choice. Now I am jobless and starving. Huh? I doubt if I can say something to prove I will be successful and then I will pay the price of not able to write poetry and make film anymore in my own um, way. In the independent film sphere, most of what I learned and created it's from pain, failure, discomfort, and tension, locality, intimacy, and uh, vulnerability are often at the center of stories where I see the human dignity and social reality. Some reality, social reality for me is that poverty, inequality, or violence are major issues in most grassroots people's daily life experience. Also, I see this uh, mostly in my research about independent filmmaking in China. Independent film, to me, is it is really speaking truth to power in all kinds of social contexts, and not only in its content, but also in its cinematic language. Especially living with COVID-19 pandemic, it's a time for us uh, filmmakers, founders, and distributors to rethink the problem of globalization and independent filmmaking, to further value locality and diversity while building up a solidarity across geography, gender, race, class, and other borders. Let me talk a little bit more about Okra and Whisper as an example on filmmaking with feminist epistemology, sorry, this English term. Um, like what these working women in the film said, we are not educated. Even though I received a PhD degree, most knowledge I need to become a woman is self-educated, self-learned, to deal with values, violence, and power obstacles in life and work. If we don't use the strategy of degendering, we don't have power. We are the powerless group, vulnerable group, in no matter what kind of society, democratic or authoritarian. We cannot just simply enter an institution or power relationship to play with gain rules defined by the traditional and dominated power structures. We have to create the women's power out of the powerless. Our crying whisper is in dialogue with a previous film, We the Workers, produced by me and directed by Wen Hai in 2017. These two films capture the reality of workers' collective action in China. I do not use the word social movement, for in the Chinese context, I doubt about any movements exist in reality. In both films, you will see that most labor action organizers are men, although in reality, most workers' strikes were won by the collective of women workers. Due to the limited access to certain senses of fil for filming, we use footage shoot by workers and labor activists. When I search for footage that put the women in the center of the image frame. I was <laughs> disappointed as I could only find very few. 
Thanks to Trish's animation, we managed to present women's images and stories in a rich way. Discussing the representation of workers, we can see the value of organic intellectual and uh, public intellectual in our society. Antonioni Glancy stated that workers must produce their own organic intellectuals to speak for working class. In China's context, intellectuals in traditional sense has a strong moral responsibility to serve the nation, namely the government's will in reality, in practice. Financially, Chinese intellectuals have to rely on either the state or the market for income. Even the new left in China, when publicly speak for workers, once they stand with the state, not surprisingly, it is feminist activists who often stand with and speak for workers. I see these worker activists in We the Workers and Occupy and Whisper, both men and women, both in speech and in action, are special intellectuals in Foucauldian term. Nelly grassroots intellectuals in China, study, China studies. They don't talk in big words, but take action in response to their own problems and the specific social problems, marginalized social uh, groups problems. They have to confront state power and capital power at the same time. However, when it comes to making a film about working women, we have far more challenges. It's first of all about idea conflicts among filmmakers and sponsors due to weak awareness of men's planning while choosing footage and what position of women's struggle in social action. In modern China's history, women's movement serves to construct a prosperous nation or democratic movement of the nation. Nowadays, with market economy in China, women are much more liberated than in Mao Zedong's era, but also are restrained in frameworks of either contributing to the economic productivity and population reproduction, or being sexualized as desired objects in the market economy. I am cautious about how power relationship is produced I appreciate the beauty of human vulnerability and looking into present humanity, the use of reason and solidarity. Through filmmaking, I want to create a women's framework based on partnership and solidarity with nature and human society for imagining a future for our society. We went through many debates among filmmakers and sponsors during the making filmmaking process the essential question is whether our cry and whisper is to represent working women's story only in political space workspace and intimate space struggling with their multiple roles like a friend lover mother worker artist and boss and more this is the true female um, filmmakers uh, preference or to see working women as women working and striking in factory only. This is the sponsor's preference. Or to see working women's struggle as an instrument or a process of a big unrest in China and Hong Kong against the authoritarianism, China's political suppression. This is also the male filmmaker's preference. You might see traces of this debate from Outcry and Whisper. We used the footage shoot by more than seven cameras, including mobile phones, and footage made with 3D animations. The relationship between people in front of the camera and behind the camera is different. Sometimes it's contradictory. This contra contrast style invites, I hope, viewers to ask what, 
who is behind the camera? What does it mean to a film and to the protagonist? The other question is, for example, in the editing room, how much power are we willing to share with filmmaking team members, sponsors, and the protagonists? How does the discomfort, discomfort created in the editing room benefit the film and all film participants without hurting? I don't have an answer, but it really depends on the very specific context. I believe everyone here uh, with me today has an answer based on your own filmmaking experience. For our crime whisper, just for your reference, one of our sponsors' guests said to our sponsors and filmmakers during the pre preview, it's a film about women. If you don't have a clear argument on the disagreements, just listen to women filmmakers' voices. Please don't laugh. It's just simple for me. I will show, I would like to share the faces of working women in our cry and whisper. Thank you. Um, I would say, ironically, uh, most prom prominent Chinese independent films do not get any chance to meet the local audiences in China. Uh, Koreans, um, Koreans um, that generate films distributions distributes a collection of Chinese independent films in the USA, including We the Workers and Outcry and Whisper. So between 2001 and 2012, there censored or little public visibility. There were the factor independent film festivals in China, holding a hotel room in a private studio on bus in university or private cinema. After 2012, very few of these independent film festivals have managed to happen in physical spaces. Many filmmakers left China. Some went to Hong Kong and organized a Chinese independent documentary lab. The lab was asking what we could do in a place with freedom. Of course, Hong Kong now is in a, a total different situation under the national security law. Last year, we decided to close Chinese independence documentary lab for various reasons. The reality is these independent filmmakers who reside in Chinese language and Chinese culture 
no matter living in China or not, they are in exile, being marginalized at their home place and at the guest place, dealing with loneliness and isolation in daily life, neither meeting their audiences nor living with their protagonists. Their creativity and thinking, I think, is trapped in the mode of ambiguities. I will say, independent documentary filmmakers are indeed grassroots intellectuals of our society. As Edward Said noted, we are always as exile and a marginal, as a major, and as the author of a language that tries to speak truth to power, whose method is throwing alternative sources, excuming buried documents, reviving forgotten or abandoned histories. What is crucial for the Chinese independent community is the ongoing uh, circulation of an underground magazine named Film Art in China. Without regular independent film festivals, this magazine connects people, maintaining a loose network of independent filmmakers, critics, and audiences. Though indie filmmakers is marginalized but avant-garde in our society in many ways, gender awareness is even being further marginalized. We have quite a lot of women filmmakers and uh, independent documentary films about women. For example, I would like to show you this special issue on women film directors uh, on the film at Alter in 2013, this beautiful photo. However, many works about women and women filmmakers' works are not yet received, deserved attention, discussion, and distribution. We have to take our own action to create a feminist, friendly, indeed, independent film community. With the emerging of young scholars, feminists, and queer scholars, we are trying to make sex, gender, and independent filmmaking issue to gain more public visibility in Chinese language in particular. A recent collection of groundbreaking scholar work is feminist approaches in women's first person documentaries from East Asia, published in studies in documentary film this year. The, I will show uh, this beautiful photo is a film about uh, um, family history and how to rebuild women's family uh, history in documentary film by uh, director Wen Hui. I am also very excited to join the editorial team for Chinese Independent Cinema Observer, a new journal to be launched in January 2021 by Chinese Independent Film Archive located in Newcastle University in the UK. The reason of me joining it, this journal editorial board is that more than half editorial members are feminist or queer scholars as well as filmmakers. Here we are, I show their lovely photos. I think today I will share my experience and end my speech here. I wish my China story and feminist perspective will provide some inspirations for your future work. Thank you very much. Hello, Jinyan. Good morning and good afternoon to our U.S. Uh, audiences. Morning, uh, Maggie. How are you? Good morning. Thank you yeah. so much. Really, um, it you know this is the second time I've heard this speech, and I just um, I pick up a lot of new things from it each time, and um, each time I see your work, I'm picking up new things from that. And um, I'm just so grateful that you've joined us here. And, um, you know, I thought that we'll, we will take some questions from the audience, but 
I, I thought I would just start by asking you about something that in one of our early conversations we talked about and that you reference in your keynote, which is the, um, the, the ways in which your feminist view of the world came into not only the subjects that you covered, but into the filmmaking process. And yes. in the, the, like you said, the, the film is a debate between the three of you in some ways. Um, this is Outcry and Whisper. Mm -hmm. And on our last panel, we um, heard filmmakers who were talking about um, campaigns and movements on and off the camera. And someone asked, well, what, what do you bring of yourself into it? And Marjan Safinia, the filmmaker, answered the question that her, her experiences and her politics influence everything she does. So of course it influences the way that she is making her films and what she makes films about. And so I just wondered if you could talk a little bit about how you came to that point. You, you described quite a long editorial debate that you had over a one five minute scene in the film. And I just wanna know how you came to that feeling, um, the, the endurance to have that argument with your male co-director and why that was so important to you. Maybe you could just talk us through that. Thank you, Maggie, for your wonderful question. It's, um, it's a difficult question, although, um, uh, I mean, because mostly because I'm from the culture, like uh, from Chinese culture, which now still very um, male dom gender biased culture, which twisted with political power, also very dominated uh, in our daily life. So um, when we, um, but uh, just as what I said in uh, in my speech, um, it's always like. Uh, everyday experience and to to uh how sensitive you are to the gender the culture and uh, the uh working and living environment so in a way i'm very sensitive because of my political experience and uh, also my professional training in uh, gender and sexuality but uh, uh, in the other way i am in a working environment that maybe people are less, um, you know, uh, somehow less sensitive to, to this issue. But, um, you know, uh, filmmaking, filmmaking is always, it's, I will say it's always about uh, um, the cinematic language, the form, the way of thinking and the way of expression. So, so uh, it's, uh, critical for me um, for me to to always to question the language not only the purpose <laughs> also not only the content what kind of font what kind of weight you present a woman you are talking about women uh, is is it women talking themselves or by explained by other people i'm uh, very sensitive to this um presentation representation so um so it's uh, um we 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 encountered we just went to the situation of debating again and again about whether is it really women speaking for herself or not um but in the end i think it's, it's tough the tension the tension um, not only between the filmmakers but also among the sponsors um, and uh, also because we met previous film with the workers which was mostly male um, activists and um, as main protagonist in the film so it's also a relationship with this male um, labor activists they give me response uh, they give me feedback and uh, how how do we consider their requests even and how do we, um, I always um, think, how do we um, practice a partnership with our protagonists also? So <laughs> it, it, it sounds very natural process. We just went into the situation. And 
And but the most importantly, I think in in the end, um, all of us uh, we have to look through our own limitations and to achieve the best for the film. Yeah. Thank you. And yeah, I I can imagine that when you are engaged in that debate, which I think you told me went on for one year, about a five minute scene that you, um, like you said, you're in a partnership with your protagonist. So you're not only arguing for your point of view, but you're arguing on behalf of what you believe is um, yeah. the best possible representation for them. Yeah. Um, the, the other part about Cry, Cry and Whisper that I, Think that you touched on in the, your keynote that's so powerful mm -hmm. to me is the way in which in different scenes we see different ways that there's a dynamic between who's behind the camera and who's in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. And um, that was really powerful. I felt you all left, left those telltale signs of who was behind the camera in the film in a way that helped me understand what those dynamics were. So I'm wondering if you could just talk mm -hmm. about how much of that you decided to leave in so that the viewer was really aware of who was holding the camera at different moments. Um, I think uh, that's a collective um, decision. It's not my own decision. And uh, also, um, it's the fact that um, Wen Hai, our film director, he to go the trance because he lives with uh, workers and uh, labor activists for quite a long time. So he used uh, through this method, he got the opportunity to capture the very um, precious moment, which we couldn't uh, <laughs> re kept, re catch later. So, um, and also uh, the film style is more like, uh, mm, <laughs> it's not a story um, interview based. So, and also it's also um, a response to the question about uh, what is really on the spot, on the scene, simultaneously, which makes documentary film real. It's not about the, uh, perfect right, perfect timing, a uh, perfect uh, uh, light, perfect uh, question. It's about uh, uh, the process, the relationship uh, in front and behind the camera. So um, so in the end, uh, um, I think as a filmmaker, we, um, we, we want to, Besides gender, gender the uh, all feminist perspective, we also want to present how this diverse and precious moments on the in the field on the scene, and uh, we use the color and sound mixing and the animation to make all this um, more than six or five cameras um, footage inconsistency in terms of style aesthetics so um what i'm trying to say is um um this collective um this collective decision making on choosing the footage is also presents the diverse diverse of our reality spontaneous of our reality and also uh, Just be the moment. I don't know how to articulate it. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. Well, it's it's wonderful, mm. and it's mm. um, of the many things I enjoy about the mm. film. Mm. I think that going through different, uh, it's it's not a traditional three act structure at all, mm. and yeah. I really appreciated that at different sections of the film I entered a new language, and that yeah. I um, and that I was carried from hearing one cinematic language and one perspective into another and that it all collectively built up. Mm -hmm. And also, I just want to add a little bit. It's also because uh, a mode about the China film, uh, Chinese independent uh, documentary uh, filmmaking background because of our context of censorship. And also, um, in reality, um, 
so uh, the filmmakers they don't have much resources to develop or to do that kind of pre-script um, um, filmmaking which uh, collectively uh, in cinematic um, language development filmmakers want to develop more individualistic and uh, more glass roots perspectives to in to um counter the official more often the official aesthetics of filmmaking for example prescript with voiceover and with grand narrative and um, but for uh, the whole collective chinese independent uh, community uh, we can see the trend of this multiple um also discursive presentation of individualistic uh, narratives and uh, with long tech to give the protagonists more time and space and audience to think to to wondering what's going to happen and to, to give more autonomy to our protagonists which is uh, not only uh, our films uh, special kind of uh, characteristic but also it's collectively built up the uh, weight of filmmaking i will add this point wonderful mm -hmm. okay i think we're going to take some questions from the audience and uh, the first question she takes so many risks to do this work how does she decide what projects are worth the danger to her and her family this question is really um, not that easy to answer because um, um, I think uh, for for my case, um, the first of all is to make the voice out, and uh, and uh, it's very I think it's very different uh, um, compared to the filmmaking contest in the USA or in Europe, so. Um, So as a filmmaker and as a researcher, I just worked on the issue that most unspeakable cannot be spoken. And also, the, uh, the, the, I work with the protagonist and the issue I'm most familiar. I need to confront it in my daily life, So, which for me is the most critical. That's my way of decision making, and before uh, before outcry and whisper, I'm kind of I'm thinking I'm kind of the filmmaker like uh, always writing and doing projects about uh, my most intimate counterparts, <laughs> and in future I will try new like a uh, new new way of um new way of filmmaking so. That's the process. Mm. I, I think the other part of that question is that for you, mm. um, there are risks with the, the way that you have chosen to live your life, not only mm. make your films, but live yes. your life. Yes. And I wonder if you could speak in particular right now to the context, mm. you're living in Hong Kong and there's a mm. national security law and yeah. um, this, this presents you, you've encountered many risks and, and you've been lived under house arrest for many years. And mm -hmm. this is yet another, another year, another layer of repression. And mm -hmm. I am curious how you prepare yourself when you are, when another, you, you, this is not new to you, mm -hmm. but yet this new law in Hong Kong is new. So I'm just curious how that, how you steal yourself for that. Um, I thought um, not only for me, but also for my friends, as I talked last time, to actually when we talked the last time to one of my friends and uh, uh, also a previous boss, and he was sentenced to jail for like 18 years. And so for all of us, it's, it's, um, it looks like 
even though we have thought a lot about this risk and the productivity issue, how to make balance, but in reality, we, we, we cannot, or I cannot, I never can prepare um, for what's going to happen to on Earth. And uh, if I cannot speak out what I want to say, what I want to write, uh, what the film I want to make, I feel I'm going to crazy. <laughs> so uh, it sounds like, uh, it sounds like, um, yeah. So with the new uh, national security um, law, um, we still see the increasing tension in Hong Kong and also because also in China, it's, it's all in one package. Um, so, and uh, also because of a new national security law, not uh, 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 independent, especially independent films, documentary films about Hong Kong protest, Hong Kong society, they began to be in a huge dilemma. The filmmakers in a huge dilemma because they can be persecuted anytime. Um, so I think um, I cannot say to, in any theoretical words, a everyone, everyone will make their own decision and under huge height pressure. Many things uh, I don't think is a result of certain rationality is a result of simultaneous and also a result of uh, contingency. Also, it's very related, very much related to independent filmmaking. We think we have a framework or prescript in making a film, but actually what make our film best is the simultaneously happened events or the contingency of the protagonist's life story or of the historical moment make a film great or wonderful <laughs> yeah that's mm, my answer <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i just want i want to say so in future i have i had been thinking like a, for like uh, more than 10 years about so what if I, I I was in jail or <laughs> detained and what will happen to me and to my daughter. But uh, in the end, I think it's better not to think too much, just try my best to do, do my writing and work, yes. And as you said, to make your resistance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Um, I, I feel truly blessed to have been introduced to your work this year, and I, I can't wait to see what you make next and, um, and to continue to be in dialogue with you. And I just want to thank you so much um, for joining us and, um, and for all, all of the guests around the world here at, at Getting Real. And, and to everyone in the audience, I just encourage you, there's some links in the chat to find um, these two films, We the Workers and Outcry and Whisper, and um, you, you, it's, it's well worth checking them out. Um, I just wanted to thank our um, ASL interpreters for this evening, um, Andrea and Mara, who've been with us so much throughout the conference, and our captioners from the National Captioning Institute, and um, we will see you tomorrow morning. There is a meditation session at 7.30 a.m. Pacific. And if you want to join us now over in the breakout room, there's a talent show. Thank you thank so you. much, Jinyan. Thank you, thank you, Maggie. Thank you everyone for making this happen. Uh, I wish everyone stay safe, healthy, and uh, I wish to see you in the USA uh, quite soon. Bye. So. Mm -hmm. Bye.